Good morning. My name is Wendy Wyman, and I'm a public affairs specialist here at the Madison VA Hospital. On behalf of everyone at the William S. Memorial, Milton Memorial Veteran Hospitals and Clinics, we welcome you and thank you for being here today. Today, we get to honor our newest member to our Hall of Heroes, Lieutenant Marsha Gates. We especially want to thank Lieutenant Gates' family, including her niece, Melissa Bowersock, and her nephew, Fred Fry, for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are able, please rise for the presentation of colors by the American Legion Post 59 Color Guard from Stoughton, and remain standing for our national anthem, sung by Ann Buckwalt. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the Please be seated. At this time, I would like to welcome Chaplain Victoria Fischel to give the invocation. Good morning. As we gather here today, may we be guided by the spirit of unity, appreciation, and celebration for this induction into the Hall of Heroes ceremony. We gather today to remember historic events and the courageous acts done by Lieutenant Marsha Gates. We are thankful for her example and for all those who have served in the military. We are also thankful for this time to be able to come together and honor someone who was so selfless and courageous in the midst of difficulties during her times of service. We ask that this ceremony be a day of reflection, of remembrance, and of renewal for each of us. May we remember the deeper meaning of this day as we share in fellowship with each other and honor the memory of Lieutenant Marcia Gates for all that she has done in her life. We celebrate her and we thank her family and all those who have turned out to support this endeavor. We ask all these things, amen. Now we'd like to share a short video introducing our Hall of Heroes program. <laughs> This is one thing that 
we can do is a veterans hospital that St. Mary's or UW Hospital just they don't have something like this. This is special. This is for our veterans, for our staff, for their family members. It's a way of paying tribute that uh, they're so well deserved. I was, uh, I joined uh, the VFW in Middleton post 8216. And for me, that was a changing point in my life. It was brought together a bunch of similar people that have experienced war and probably changed their lives forever. Someone there said, well, you have a silver star. Uh, we need to do something to recognize that. And uh, the rest is history. I hang on the wall and uh, the, the thing uh, I guess if nobody would have ever done that, identify me, uh, it'd still be hidden. This is their chance. It's going to mean so much to have their family, friends, and actually be in a safe environment versus their initial wards. It could have been right after action. That some general could have pinned on a, the medal, and it's forgotten. But uh, to have uh, a ceremony like this, I think it means a lot to them. Uh, it meant so much to family, uh, VA staff, uh, everybody that knew the veterans just got to hear their stories. Uh, and it's, it's in a great place where everybody sees it that goes through there. And, and you know, the, the, the workforce at the VA know you they've they've read your story they they've seen you and they know who you are and what you have done uh, there aren't many things in life like that in 2002 John, dr john hover then chief of dentistry began the hall of heroes program at our hospital his idea was to honor veterans in Madison area whose military service was especially heroic. Since the initial ceremony, the program has inducted 18 veterans representing four different branches of service with various awards. We'd like to take this opportunity to observe a moment of silence for all our inductees who are, who are no longer with us, including Lieutenant Norman Morozik, who passed away since our last induction. Now, <clears throat> we are proud to recognize the past inductees of our Hall of Heroes. If you or your family are here and able, please stand to be recognized when your name is called. Our heroes are Sergeant Robert Botts, Captain Donald Heiliger, Sergeant David Brenzel, Corporal James Stevenson, Private First Class James Anagonistopoulos, Second Lieutenant James Duncan, Sergeant Harry Dickerson, Lieutenant James Morgan, Sergeant Joshua Brennan, Private First Class Ralph Warner, Sergeant First Class Thomas Renault, Staff Sergeant Daniel Bush, Captain Scott Alwyn, Sergeant Thomas Feeney, Lieutenant Norman Morosik, Sergeant Akira Toki, Captain Tony Paulson, Colonel Laverne Griffin. Today, Lieutenant Marsha Gates will join these heroes on our wall. <clears throat> Today is also Women's Veterans Recognition Day. It is not a separate Veterans Day for women, but a day celebrating the signing of Women's Armed Services Integration Act of 1948. This legislation allowed women to serve as permanent members of the armed forces. Before this, all women except for nurses were sent home after each conflict. In 1941, 
when she joined the Army, Lieutenant Gates was a nurse, which was the only profession a woman was allowed to serve in the military during peacetime. However, by the end of the war, over 350,000 women would wear the American service uniform and serve in over 200 different occupational specialties. These trailblazing women paved the way for later generations to, and helped inspire female service members across all the military branches. While Lieutenant Gates and her fellow women veterans did not serve in combat roles, they did serve in harm's way. 432 service women were killed during World War II and 88 were taken prisoner. Lieutenant Gates was one of these 88. Her actions as a nurse and a POW highlighted not only her strength and resiliency, but her dedication to duty and country. As a fellow veteran who served in a combat zone, I feel Lieutenant Gates said it best when she said, nothing else you will do in your lives will mean so much to so many. With that in mind, I'm pleased to welcome our Executive Director, Christine Kleckner. Please join me in welcoming Christine to the stage. Thank you, Wendy. And thank you to the family and friends of our honoree, Lieutenant Marsha Gates, for joining us today. The Hall of Heroes is our way here at the Madison VA Hospital to honor and recognize local veterans and service members who have served their country in wartime and have been awarded military decorations for valor, heroism, and specific combat actions. It serves as a reminder of what our courageous veterans endured and honors the sacrifices they made. During her military career, Lieutenant Gates served as a nurse and for over 30 months of her service, she served as a nurse while also being a prisoner of war in the Santo Tomas internment camp in Manila. Lieutenant Gates' service and sacrifice for others was exceptional. Her family archives are available online and we're so thankful that they shared those with our Wisconsin Veterans Museum. Reading through those archives, you can follow her story from her parents' constant attempts to verify her whereabouts to the confirmation they received from the War Department informing them that their daughter was a POW, to the welcome home letter she received from President Roosevelt thanking her for her, for her heroic service. Her unique and important story reflects the sacrifice so many made to lead our nation to victory in the Second World War. Her story is one of, well, a hero. A hero worthy of recognition in the halls of our Madison VA Hospital. It is now my pleasure to welcome to the stage to share some of the story, um, Lieutenant Gates' niece, Melissa Bowersock. Thank you, thank you all for being here. I'm, I might have a little trouble with this. <sighs> but I, I did want to read a short um, biography of my aunt, Marcia Gates. <clears throat> Marcia Louise Gates was one of four sisters born in Milwaukee to Marcia Porter Gates and Harrison Gates. Now the legacy of the Gates women is one of strength, independence, and determination. Marcia's mother, my grandmother, was actually quite the scandal. She was divorced and raising four girls on her own. She modeled for her girls that strength of character, that determination to carry on in the face of challenges. And it was precisely these characteristics that served Marcia well during her own turbulent times. Growing up in the heartland of America has a unique way of imbuing its residents with a strong sense of patriotism and pride. That was true of Marcia as well. 
Early in 1941, when aggressions were already being seen on the shores far from the U.S., Marcia enlisted in the Army, both out of a sense of patriotism and a desire to see the world. Marcia wanted very badly to be posted in Europe, but was sent to the Philippines instead. While not her first choice, she found the South Pacific to be a virtual paradise, and she wrote home about the wonderful Philippine people, the beautiful scenery, and the abundance of single men looking for dance partners. <laughs> her letters back home to family regaled them with talk of parties, dances, and the need to buy new evening gowns. That all changed on December 8th. After the bombing of Manila, the US forces there began a months-long flight from the invading Japanese, first down the Bataan Peninsula, and then finally to The Rock, the island of Corregidor. That proved to be their final stand, and they were captured there and returned to Manila as prisoners. The campus of the University of Santo Tomas was converted into a prison camp, and for three years, sequestered there, the nurses continued their work, caring for their fellow prisoners, both military and civilian. For the first two years, it wasn't too bad. The civilian Japanese in charge allowed the prisoners to trade with the natives for food and clothing. Marcia recalled paying $50 for a can of peaches a rare and blissful treat. However, when the tide of the war turned, military Japanese took over the camp and things got grim. The US, of course, was doing its best to disrupt Japanese supply lines, which meant less food for the prisoners as well as the Japanese troops. Marsha recalled how at one point, she crawled around on the floor for several minutes searching for a single grain of rice that she had dropped. The prisoners were starving. At the time of liberation, a Red Cross worker estimated that many of the prisoners would not have lived another five days. Luckily for them, liberation did come. The nurses were transported back to the US, honored with the Bronze Star, and a promotion and hailed as heroes everywhere they went. Marcia said they never understood this label of hero. She said they all felt they were simply doing their jobs. After her recuperation, Marcia longed to return to duty, but it was not to be. She spent the rest of her service in the US still working in healthcare. After the war ended, she did something remarkable. She went to Japan and spent two years working in a children's hospital there, where some veterans saw the Japanese as their one-time enemy. Marcia saw only children in need. She worked the rest of her life in healthcare, passing away in 1970. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, now I would like to welcome Lieutenant Gates' nephew, Fred Fry, to read her Bronze Star Citation. <clears throat> I'd like to echo Melissa's comments. Thank you all for coming today. We, we really appreciate it. It's my honor to read this proclamation. By direction of the President, under the provisions of Executive Order Number 9419, 4 February 1944, a Bronze Star Medal is awarded by the Commanding General, United States Army Forces in the Far East, to the following named member of the Army Nurse Corps for meritorious achievement while in the hands of the enemy in caring for the sick and wounded, Second Lieutenant Marcia Gates,
by command of General Douglas MacArthur. Thank you, Fred. I invite Melissa and Fred to join uh, Christine on the stage for the formal induction and unveiling of the plaque. Please stand if you are able. While serving in the United States Army, Lieutenant Marcia Gates distinguished herself as a nurse and prisoner of war during World War II, earning a Bronze Star. During her service, she demonstrated exceptional bravery in the face of adversity and an unwavering dedication to duty that inspired generations of women in uniform. Through action and deed, she brought great credit upon herself, her family, and her country. It is our honor to formally induct Lieutenant Marsha Gates into the William S. Middleton Memorial Veterans Hall of Heroes. <laughs> Please be seated. Lieutenant Gates' plaque will be placed in the Hall of Heroes next to our other veterans of valor. The Hall of Heroes is located on the first floor next to the uh, Patient Education and Resource Center. Additionally, you can view our Hall of Heroes online at our website, as well as watch past ceremonies where available. We would like to thank Melissa Bowersock and Fred Fry for nominating Lieutenant Gates, as well as the Deerfield Historical Society and Richard Haney for their assistance with supporting documentation. Additionally, we'd like to thank Lieutenant Gates' family, including Graham Lee, for joining us to honor her today. This concludes our ceremony. First, we'll give the media an opportunity to interview Lieutenant Gates' family. Meanwhile, you are invited to join the, uh, enjoy the cake that is at the back of the auditorium and then take a few photos. We do ask that you keep the noise to a minimum while the interviews are being conducted. Finally, please remember to nominate your veteran for our Hall of Heroes. And we'll see you back here in November for our next induction. Thank you for joining us and drive safely.